okay? The real showcase of weakness is not how we fail to deal with Russia. The real showcase of American power waning is how we deal with Israel. Okay? We can't even fucking get Israel to dial it back on the ethnic cleansing campaign a little bit. And we could. We just don't want to do it. And therefore, we're just looking like fucking assholes. Outrage after one of Vladimir Putin's sharpest critics, Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, was reported dead in a Russian prison, reportedly dying after taking a walk, a fatal walk. U.S. officials are still waiting to confirm the Russian guys, state guys. media. I mean, come on. That happens all the time. He was probably vaccinated. He probably got that Moderna, you know what I'm saying? Which is really funny to say about Vladimir Putin, by the way, because he is a massive fucking COVID nut. Remember when Putin literally would not even, like... ...the acclaim... Navalny's wife had this to say just a short time ago in front of dozens of heads of state. If it is the truth, I would like Putin and all his staff, everybody around him, his government, his friends, I want them to know that they will be punished for what they have done with our country, with my family, and with my husband. They will be brought to justice, and this day will come soon. What strength to stand there in Munich. With us now, CNN's Chief International Correspondent Clarissa Ward and Matthew Chance, Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Clarissa. Um, you could see the anger and also the resolve from Alexei's, Alexei Navalny's wife there. It was a very emotional moment, and she actually started out, John, by saying, you know, I, I thought for a moment, do I go home to my family right now, or do I stand here and address you? And then I asked myself, what would Alexei do? What would Alexei want me to do? And I have no doubt that he would want me to stand here to address you uh, and to issue that withering rebuke uh, to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Of course, at this stage, we don't know exactly what killed Alexei Navalny. Uh, we have only been told through Russian media that he took a walk at the penal colony uh, where he was suffering. I don't get why he fucking went back to Russia. Like, it makes no goddamn sense. Did he think that, like, he would be supported by... A, a majority of people enough that like he could um he could be kept alive or something like i don't really understand it because it's like bro he fucking he got poisoned already bro it, look if the number one poisoner can get to me pretty much anywhere around the planet i'm definitely not going directly to russia to be like, all right, go ahead. Sure, big guy. Sure, tough guy who poisoned me. Let's see what else you got. You know, give me your best shot. But <laughs> famous last words before getting hit with the best shot. In terrible treatment where he had at times been in less than good health. And yet when we saw him yesterday um, via teleconference from a courtroom, he appeared healthy, he appeared jovial. We've also heard a report from his mother who told Novaya Gazeta, the Russian publication, that she wouldn't be accepting condolences because she couldn't believe it, because she had seen Alexei Navalny on February 14th, that he had appeared to be in good health and good humor. And so there are real questions about exactly what happened to him. But you heard also at the Munich Security Conference the Vice President Kamala Harris saying, whatever happened, Russia is responsible. He was in the custody of the Russian state. And so I mean, this part is 100 percent so true. The question really now becomes, what does this mean for Russia's opposition, which has already been so brutally uh, stomped out? What do you mean, what does this mean? It means that the last fucking dude who had like, who was any real opposition to Vladimir Putin is dead. 
There is no real opposition of Vladimir Putin in Russia. And yes, I mean, literally, like, the Communist Party is also not real opposition to Vladimir Putin. It doesn't really change much, I think, with the internal dynamics in Russia either. Out. Does this mean, could we see potentially more protests or resurgence of the sort of protest movements that Alexei Navalny had previously um, galvanized in Russia? Or is this it? Is this the end? Is this message that there is absolutely no opposition of any shape or form to be tolerated inside Putin's Russia, John? Yeah, and, and to that point, you heard from Alexei Navalny's... I do think it's funny, though, that liberals are like, yeah... Navalny, great guy. He would be sick if he killed Vladimir Putin and became the leader of Russia. Not realizing that, like, okay, Vladimir Putin was our guy. Look at him now. Liberals have this, like, weird short-term uh, way of thinking about, like, the ideological tendencies of those who are enemies of our enemies. And they just, like, they literally think in, like, Three month uh, spans. Okay. It's so weird. It is so odd. Okay. So was Putin, man. <laughs> Look where that got us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Liberals tend to uh, think in like uh, quarters. Much capitalist uh, thinking. Also, uh, apparently, journalists have been arrested in Moscow and St. Petersburg following the death of jailed Putin critic Alexei Navalny. Before people say these are like fucking assets or CIA or anything, no, the fuck they're not. Okay, I think that Navalny is basically like a, like a placeholder for any kind of opposition of Vladimir Putin's reign, and it's perfectly valid. And understandable to want to oppose Vladimir Putin. And I would say brave too, but. It's just GG's. Affairs editor Dominic Waghorn, um, uh, his analysis of how the government in Russia clamps down on all forms of opposition. We have just had these uh, pictures in, I believe, showing uh, two Rus News journalists, uh, it's a local news provider uh, in Russia, uh, being detained. <laughs> Isn't the Communist Party bigger than Navalny's? Some of you read like one Twitter thread and then come in here and be like, but you don't understand the Communist Party. Like, what do you mean? What, what the fuck? The Communist Party is not real opposition to Vladimir Putin. Every single party that is allowed to exist and operate without like being fucking poisoned is technically still controlled opposition i know i know that the communist party is is in existence in russia it doesn't mean anything and they're not like a fucking real opposition party please the moment that they become a real opposition party and not controlled opposition party they will no longer exist You're breaking some chatter's dreams? Yeah. Uh, I guess. Navalny was basically clip champ by state media out of context. It looked like he's far uh, more right than he is. Bro, I'm sorry. It's going to be real hard for me to fucking get on board with that when I see the dude say that Muslims are cockroaches that need to be exterminated. That's like... Like, what do you think was going on? You know what I mean? In that clip? Like, was he like, hey, guys, like leading up to the leading up to the fucking uh, clip. He said, hey, 
everything I'm about to say about Muslims, I do not believe. This is what the opposition to me says. Muslims are actually cockroach, and we must exterminate them with a gun. I do not believe this. He's like, pause after it. And then that's the clip? Is that what it is? What happened? Detained by authorities. Of course, people had been told uh, by the authorities in Russia not... Yeah, this is what is actually a good take. In the end, even if Navalny had nationalistic views originally and would probably be a bad president himself, he ultimately led meaningful resistance against Putin. The fact that he made so many people vote on a fake candidate to put on ballot by Putin frightens Putin. That part is the only correct part. It's that he was made to be the figurehead of like real opposition to Vladimir Putin. That's the that's the actual take. He was seen as like the only standalone figurehead. <laughs> Navalny is the 99 Hitler, 99% Hitler to Putin, pretty much. And and I think that it was it's the optics of that as well. And that's probably why he was he may or may not have been murdered. <laughs> You know, sometimes, sometimes you just fall out of a window, chat. Not to come out in numbers, not to protest uh, following the death of Mr. Navalny. Uh, the video in the aftermath of the death of the Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. Earlier, we heard from our international affairs editor. Don what did Navalny actually disagree with Putin about? Not being Vladimir Putin. I would go so far as to say that the worst thing you can be against Vladimir Putin is like be in line with his ideas and not be him because there might be a lot of people that fucking don't even care about like Vladimir Putin's um, tendencies, but they don't like that he's uh, been in power for so long and then understandably notice his corruptions. Like notice how corrupt he is. So... From their perspective, it's like, okay, well, I like this guy's ideas. I also think Muslims are cockroaches that need to be exterminated, but at least this guy's not Vladimir Putin who's saying it. That's great. That is a terrifying prospect for a, a, uh, a despot, a dictator. I guess the major difference between uh, Russia with Vladimir Putin and Erdogan, who is like my own uh, version of Vladimir Putin, is that... Erdogan still holds elections, like real elections. Now, I like to say this uh, so that people understand. Turkish elections are not fair. They are so unfair. They're completely fucking unfair. But they are, at the end of the day, free. And does that make sense? They're still, they're still utterly, unimaginably unfair. But they're still free. So there is still, like, unfortunately, a 51% coalition for Erdogan in this country. Okay? In Russia, no such thing exists. Dominic Waghorn, um, it does not analysis exist. of how the government in Russia clamps down on all forms of opposition. We have just had these uh, pictures in, I believe, showing uh, two Rus news journalists, uh, it's a local news provider uh, in Russia, uh, being detained by authorities. Of course, people had been told uh, by the authorities in Russia not to come out in numbers, not to protest uh, following the death of Mr. Navalny. Uh, these pictures, we believe, show uh, two journalists, uh, Yulia Petrova, uh, being detained in Moscow. Uh, there are also pictures, we believe, I'm not sure that these are those, uh, but there are uh, other pictures showing uh, the moments before the detention of another Rus news journalist, Alina Kozichin, uh, in St. Petersburg. So clearly there is something of a protest taking place across Russia, something of a clampdown as well. His wife saying that Vladimir Putin, Russia will be punished. I suppose, Matthew Chance, the question is, you know, will they? Will Russians blame someone for this? I mean, look, we don't know the answers to that yet, but 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 look, I can tell you that many Russians that I've spoken to and have, or have expressed their views in the media um, are expressing their shock that this has happened, that Alexei Navalny, uh, who is 
undoubtedly the most high profile opposition figure in the country has died whilst in the custody of the Russian prison authorities. Now, whether that will have um, an impact um, in the way that Alexei Navalny has had an impact in the past, he's, he's been able to bring out tens of thousands of people onto the streets in towns and cities across the country. Um, here, this is what I wanted to show you. You can't turn to stuffing back. What Navalny said about occupied Crimea in the morning of August 20th, uh, uh, Russian opposition politician Alexei uh, Navalny was hospitalized in intensive care, severe poisoning. Crimea is what? A sausage sandwich. In October 2014, Alexei Navalny gave an interview to the Echo of Moscow radio station. The meeting caused a stir among opposition supporters, mainly through Navalny's words about Crimea. To the question, are Crimea? The politician replied, Crimea is the people who live in Crimea. And the peninsula was seized with a flagrant violation of all international norms, but is now part of Russia. Navalny advised Ukrainians not to deceive themselves. Crimea will remain a part of Russia and never will never become a part of Ukraine again in the foreseeable future. Okay. He also said that when he becomes president of the Russian Federation, he will not return the semi-island to Kiev. Crimea is what? A sandwich with sausage to be returned here and there, Navalny asked. Navalny's words surprised the supporters and other opposi uh, oppositionists. Some did not see anything new in his words, and others were disappointed by Navalny's policy. Like, Navalny's policy shift on Crimea may be too little too late. And then, he changed his attitude on it. But at that point, it's like, it's fucking bullshit. Okay, by Allah, what does it mean? It says that Navalny was killed by Putin with 100% fact with evidence, regardless of if it was true or not. I mean, it's, it's a very likely scenario. He said the same thing you said about Crimea. Yeah, I don't think you understand. Um, I don't think you understand. The reason, when I say it, people fucking yell at me as I'm a Putin dick rider, dog. When I say it, people say... I love sucking Vladimir Putin's cock. When Navalny is saying the same thing, but they're, they're fucking saying that he has like genuine disagreements with uh, Vladimir Putin. When on a lot of issues, he does not. He is like the anti-corruption and the, and the attitude that he has, the attitude that he's displayed about like his uh, actual positions in Ukraine or anything like that. Um, anything like that is... Just to show you that it's not, it's just, he's just not Putin. That's it. That's the reason why Putin wanted to kill him. And that's the reason why a lot of people wanted to, um, a lot of people wanted to prop him up inside of, uh, uh Ukraine as, I mean, uh, not inside of Ukraine, sorry, inside of Russia as well. That's it. And saying that Russia is responsible no matter what for his death is 100% correct because he's in the custody of the state. It's over. When you let someone fucking die, when they're in the custody of the state, it's their fault. It's the state's fault. When he's called for them in the Even past, if they don't directly kill him, which I believe now. they probably did. Um, and there's been this chill descend over uh, the Russian opposition. And this is yet another very potent message to opponents of the Kremlin about the terrible consequences that can befall you if you stand up to Vladimir Putin and and his and his regime. Because remember, no matter how shocking this death of Alexei Navalny is, it's not altogether surprising. I mean, Alexei Navalny was himself poisoned and narrowly escaped death you know, a couple of years ago. He, he chose to come back to place himself at the center of Russian politics, having, you know, narrowly escaped death himself. And then, of course, there's a long list of opponents of Putin, opponents of the Kremlin and its critics who have met, you know, tragic ends. I mean, just last year, uh, although perhaps I wouldn't describe it as a tragedy, Evgeny Prigozhin, who was a supporter of Putin, turned somebody who staged a military uprising against Putin's authority. Well, he was killed in a plane crash under suspicious circumstances. Before that, in you know, the, the list goes on. But in 2015, mm. you know, I went to the funeral and covered the assassina assassination of Boris Nemtsov, who was the sort of um, Alexei Navalny of his time, if you like. He was the most vocal critic.
the most prominent opposition figure uh, against the Kremlin. He was gunned down outside the walls of the Kremlin. And, and the list goes on. And so, again, this is, this is shocking, but it does fit into a pattern of critics of the Kremlin who meet sticky ends. John. Across Vladimir Putin, a lot of people end up dead. A lot of people have fallen out of windows, literally, or pushed. Who knows? Defenestration is an interesting word in Russia. Clarissa Ward, can you speak to the years of, of courage? Bro, I'm sorry. That just kind of happens, dude. You're crazy. Courage <laughs> that Alexei Navalny showed. It's something that you saw firsthand. Well, the decision, John, to go back to Russia, when I interviewed him shortly after he was recuperating from being poor. I do personally love the way liberals fucking talk about foreign adversaries versus our allies, though. This guy, I want to hear him speak on, on, you know, no uncertain terms like this about Israel's ethnic cleansing in Gaza. I want that shit so bad. You bulking fam, 2.5 hour intervals between meals. This is my first meal of the day, you fucking jackass. What do you mean? Suck my dick. This is my first meal of the fucking day. What do you mean I'm bulking? Why, what are you timing? If you're going to time me, at least... Listen, if you're going to literally autistically time what kind of fucking food I'm eating and, and how I'm consuming, at least be right. Don't be fucking wrong. Don't do it. Okay? Dumb bitch. I can't believe it. Two and a half hour fucking, uh, are you trying to bulk? Two and a half hours uh, in between the last time you ate is, is fucking so stupid. This is my first meal today. Poisoned with Navi chalk. And I said, why would you go back? You know the risks. You know that they tried to kill you. But he was very sanguine about the risks. He was very determined to see and fulfill his mission, which he believed was to serve the Russian people. He understood implicitly that he could not do that in exile. He knew the risks, and yet he decided to go ahead and do what he felt was necessary and important to do. And I think that any criticism that one could possibly level at Alexei Navalny, certainly cowardice is not one of them. This is a man who is one of the most, or was one of the most extraordinary- You usually eat during the top news stories? No, everything I cover is important for someone. I eat at fucking 4 p.m. every day. Or sometimes 3 p.m. if I'm hungrier. That's it. So the reason why you think it's the most important news story is because you think this is the most important news story of the day. That's it. I already covered this news story, ironically, earlier in the day for hours, as a matter of fact. Damn, they're calling you a real eater in chat. Shit's crazy. <laughs> exactly courageous individuals certainly that I have ever interviewed John he walked into the fire uh, Clarissa Ward Matthew Chance thank you both so much for being with us I know we're going to talk to you again very soon in 2021 US President Joe Biden warned Russian President Vladimir Putin that Moscow would face devastating consequences if Alexei Navalny were to die in prison here are Mr. Biden's remarks to the media about that conversation what do you say would happen if opposition leader Alexei Navalny dies? I made it clear to him that I believe the, the consequences of that would be devastating for Russia. Well, let's get to Arlette signs at the White House. What has been the response at this point? Well, Becky, uh, White House officials, administration officials have been stressing they are still working on actual confirmation of these reports that Alexei Navalny died while in prison in Russia. But they have expressed uh, their belief that this is a terrible tragedy. We've also heard directly from Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who both said, even as they're waiting confirmation for these reports, that they believe Russia is responsible. We also know Blinken uh, met privately with the wife of Alexei Navalny 
Navalny Yulia to express his condolences if these reports actually do pan out to be true. But it does come, as you heard from President Biden there, that he has warned Russian President Vladimir Putin directly that the consequences of Navalny dying in prison uh, would be devastating for Russia. Now, this was before Russia invaded. What's he going to do, bro? Actually, what is he going to do? It's like, like what? We're, are we going to nuke Russia? What are we going to do to Russia? Are we going to put more sanctions? Yeah, what are we going to do? Bomb Nord Stream? I think the real genuine issue here is that it is no longer American restraint. It's literally just like American incompetence. Problem is we, we already nutted with the sanctions. We busted a nut. And it didn't fucking, it, it literally did not stop Vladimir Putin. So what do we do now? What do we do now? But worse, uh, worse of it all isn't the, the way that we are dealing with our foreign adversaries. The real problem is how we deal with our fucking foreign allies. Okay? The real showcase of weakness is not how we fail to deal with Russia. The real showcase of American power waning is how we deal with Israel. Okay? We can't even fucking get Israel to dial it back on the ethnic cleansing campaign a little bit. And we could. We just don't want to do it. And therefore, we're just looking like fucking assholes. Ukraine before the crippling sanctions that had been issued against the country in the wake of that invasion. So it, there's a big question about what the consequences would look like now. That is something National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan hinted at a bit earlier today in his own uh, remarks about this, saying that they will be working uh, with countries once they've confirmed that this is true to figure out what those next steps will be. But this is something Biden has really been pressing Putin on since the beginning of his administration. In his very first phone call with Putin, Biden raised the need need for Putin to immediately release Navalny. That is something that administration officials consistently have been pushing for in recent years. Now, right now, uh, the, just a short while ago, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, delivered remarks in Munich where she talked about how this is a further sign of Putin's brutality uh, in Russia. But Harris's uh, meet meetings and conversations that are ongoing in Munich are now really taking, taking on a heightened significance. Harris had been traveling there to in one part uh, to talk about the U.S. role in the world, but also U.S. commitment to NATO allies at a Trump. Bro, I really don't understand how why this dude went back. I, I'm trying to wrap my head around why he would go back to like uh, the capital of like murdering Putin's political opposition as Putin's major political opposition. Like, what the fuck did he think was going to happen? I genuinely don't get it. Trump, or at, at a time when back here at home, former President Donald Trump uh, recently suggested that he would encourage... Like, did he think, as long as I don't stand near a window, I'm good? Like, what the fuck? He's like, listen, guys, you don't understand, okay? The big problem is windows. If I stand very far away from the nearest window, I win. No more tea, no more windows. We're fucking good. Putin to do whatever he wants to countries who have not met their NATO obligations. The vice president made a very veiled reference to that uh, in her remarks a bit earlier, saying, imagine if we went easy on Putin, let alone uh, encouraged him. So Talk about something else like Japan entering recession, Indonesia elections, incident at Taiwan Strait. Take a day off.
So uh, this death, uh, reported death of Navalny certainly will raise the stakes of her conversations she is having there overseas. Uh, we are still waiting to hear from President Biden to certainly anticipate there will be at least at the very least a paper statement from him. He's also expected to travel a bit later today. So we will see what exactly the president has to say. But this is very concerning uh, to the White House. And the bit next questions going forward is what the White House, uh, what the U.S. and its allies might do to respond uh, to this reported death. Uh, we all know Vladimir Putin is a big Hassanabi hit. He watches me because I'm his greatest supporter in the West. And it's very clear that that chatter that I just banned for a day is probably Vladimir Putin on his alt account. Come on, Hassan, talk about something interesting, not this fucking bullshit. Please talk about how I ride horse shirtless, okay? Da, das vidania. I love when you play contraband police. It makes me very, it makes me feel very happy. Oh, dude. Uh, the other thing we're going to talk about is uh, uh, Tucker Carl.